I wanted to share with you a new sketchbook, a new book of inspiration, and a new style that I'm kind of going for. The book that I wanted to share is The Flowers of Provence by Jamie Beck. I believe this is her second book. Her first book is An American in Provence, which is just as beautiful. This one is smaller, more compact. You can see it's quite small, but the photography, oh my gosh, when I show you guys, look at this book. Just look at, it's just so full of beautiful images. And I'm gonna take you through that. But I wanted to share a new sketchbook. This is an octopus sketchbook. And you can see that it is hinged. You can see there's eight different sections in there and they kind of unfold like a kind of like a concertina but it's called an octopus because it has eight arms so I'm going to share what I'm doing from this book in here but my reason for doing it the way that I'm doing comes from this book this is a book called the right word by Jen Bryant but illustrated by Melissa Sweet it was Melissa Sweet's style that really made me want to do some things with this. I loved this format. So you see how everything is really vertical? I don't normally paint like that. So I was really intrigued by the idea of lines and verticalness. And see how she's got some things sticking like out over lines. She does a mix of um, vintage digital but then illustrates it on top there's also this page here which again i just love the linear quality of it i like that they were just lines but again vertical lines well they're horizontal here but if you look at it this way i never thought about doing lines of art before this is written but i just love that so this was the inspiration for how i'm going to show you i'm using this sketchbook Again, the illustrator's name is Melissa Sweet. So I'm gonna show you this book because this book is packed full of information and beauty and just photography on steroids. It is a beautiful book. The Flowers of Provence by Jamie Beck. Look at that. <laughs> to me, it, it just warms you with color and texture and it sets a mood. All of her pictures to me set a mood, and I love that. I mean, look at that, you guys. Is that not gorgeous? I mean, that alone, right? Just creating in a sketchbook would be magical. Look at that. <laughs> the coloration. So think about even just doing a palette. I mean, if you were to pull a palette from this page alone, you've got a violet pink, you've got a pink corally pink, you have a mauve pink back here, you've got a peach, you've got a really deep burgundy black. Look at all the greens too. You've got a really chartreuse green here, a yellow green here, a nice kind of earthy green here a really matte green here. So imagine just creating a color palette with this book. It would be gorgeous, <laughs> I'm telling you. There is so much you can do with this book. I know, look, we're like only on page three, right? So this book is packed full of gorgeous, two page full of color images. There's hardly any writing in here. It's mostly photographs and her story. There's a little bit. Look at that picture. <laughs> Look at the old world feel in here too is really, really lovely. I mean, think about if you were wanting to create a nice, moody, dramatic palette of colors. Isn't that gorgeous? I mean, you could do anything with that, but it's just so nicely set, right? It sets the feeling that you're wanting. Look at that gorgeous shot. I know, right? 
Look at the colors. And I love this, something like this, because if you were to study a color, let's say you're picking 10 values on this page. Let's say your lightest here, and then it goes into more medium value, and then it goes really into deep and dusky over here. Look at those shadow colors. So imagine doing just 10 swatches of the same color. So how would you get to this? Would you mute it? Would you add a complementary color? How would you get it to be that dusky? For this, are you adding water or did you start with something that had a lot of white pigment in it? How are you making it more muted? You know, I'm adding buff titanium to mine, but how are you going to do that? So it's a lovely just value page right there. I mean, look at the brightness of that. Isn't that gorgeous? Let me show you one of where she's got her hands. Look at that. <laughs> I'm telling you, this book is worth its weight in gold. Now look at this. Doesn't this remind you of Van Gogh? It, the minute I saw it, I was like Van Gogh's sunflowers. But look at the depth of this page. Okay, you're looking through a tunnel or a, a bypass here, and then you get to see all this beautifulness behind it. And look at the, just the texture of the rocks and the scene there. But I love the yellow connection here and here. Look at that page. Oh my. You can almost smell the flowers. <laughs> She's got great fruit. Like think of really the old masters, how they used to do fruit in still lives. I just love the dramaticness of it. I mean, look at the shadows, look at the depth, look at the light on here. Again, this would be a great color study of just things that go together, like an autumn palette. It looks like harvest and it's got all these beautiful colors from eggplant to bright red, to some greens, to some yellows, to some really oranges in here. It's just really pretty. Look at her lovely hand shots. So if you are wanting to study hands and poses, she almost has dancer hands. They're always very relaxed in the photos, but just look how beautiful they are. I think that's just a lovely page. And look at this little vase here with all of these overstuffed blossoms. So beautiful. So this was my inspiration. As you can see, it's just chock full of page after page after page. If you wanted to study little glass faces in different sizes and shapes, look how beautiful you would have a great time doing that. Plus, look at all the bold colors here. So if you're someone who really likes to paint in like say a bolder color, you know I'm not bold at all in my color choices, but if you wanted to use an orange here, it's a great study on how to get like a yellow orange into the deep red orange and almost a little touch of brown in there to get the depth of that color. And look at this more of a like burgundy violet where you've got a little brighter shade and then it goes into the deep almost blue blue violet shades to give it that that richness and that darkness. It's a great study again of color palette but also value and tone. So I hope you'll check this book out. Oh look at that. <laughs> so let me share inside my sketchbook what I've used and how I've used it from here. My friend Sandy and I wanted to do a study together and we're doing it differently but we're using the same photos. I wanted mine to be more, remember, vertical, like the Melissa Sweet inspiration. So here was the first picture that we were inspired by. And we asked ourselves some, some questions. Pick three keywords that describe this to you, which is always a good thing to make it connect to you. What is the one treasure that you find that is totally intriguing or fascinating to you? And then the mood, what mood does it set for you? So for me, the first thing that I did here was I decided on the color palette that I wanted to use from this picture. And then I worked on the color mixes that I could make. 
And then my three keywords, so the next page is my keywords. I called it the abandoned garden. My keywords were hidden, forgotten, overrun, and decaying. So let me bring that up closer so you can see that. So you can see a lot of these flowers here are kind of on their way out, right? They're not pretty, they're not pristine. It's almost like the petals, I mean, look at that stalk there, or the center. You can see they're kind of on their way out, but for me, that was the beauty of it all. The treasure for me was the water drops. Do you see them? <laughs> they're way down here. See them on this petal? I like that little area of just of water drops. There were hidden butterflies. Do you see them? So there's one here. There's one here. What I like about this one, it's light on one side and dark on the other. But then here's the hidden one. I'll bring it up so you can see that. See it right in there, right there. And then here's the one that has a light and dark side, which I thought was really intriguing. And the mood for me, I wrote forlorn, forgotten, and desolate because they just look like they're abandoned to me. Like they were brought in and maybe they went away for a while and this is what's left of the bouquet. So that's what I mean by forlorn and forgotten. So from here, remember, I'm wanting to do vertical studies. And this was the first one, and I was asking myself, okay, how can I make a vertical study? And I want you to think of a long, skinny portion, right? That's it, just a long, skinny portion. So if I get out my cropping tool here and do something like this, I mean, look what it does to the whole area. It really just breaks it up into color without a lot of details. I can do that again over here. See how that looks? I can do that over here. It's giving you little snippets, and I kind of like that. So my journey of this goes like this through my sketchbook. So I start with the palette, then I give it the words. I've given it a little drawing of what the page is because there are no page numbers in that book. And then I have it pulled out like this. So I wanted to work on a little bit of vintage paper, so I ended up just taking one of my journals and gluing a page back here so that I could see how the paint, the watercolor paint, reacts on vintage paper. And then here was my treasure of the water drop. And then I started doing the vertical sections. You can see that I'm trying not to capture too much. What I'm trying to get is different textures throughout. So here I have the really tiny flowers, the big peony, some a big flower next to it, and some dark leaves. Here I have the butterfly mixed in with leaves and a little bit of flower. Here I have the flowers that are kind of on their way out, and I left a little bit of uh, the delicate flower here, but I was really intrigued by the shadows here. And then on this page, it was the big flower with the huge center coming out, and then a dark leaf, and then a big white area here. So let me bring that up closer so you can see here my water drop study. Here was me working on the vintage paper. Here are my stripes. So look at all the different textures there. That's really what I was trying to connect with. And then I picked one element to make really big. And for that, I was really intrigued by all of the ruffles of these flowers. I've never seen anything so compact before. They're almost like a ranunculus, peony, rose all tied together. They're just an enormous. Look at all those petals but I loved the coloration. I mean, look at that. You see how dark it is here and how light it is here, but then it's got all these circle bands all throughout. So I tried to capture that here without getting into a lot of detail. Remember, I'm trying to be a little looser. So what I was trying to do was just make the 
circular motion there without me adding or 10,000 petals. But yet I still wanted it to have a little light and dark. So this was done really all wet on wet. I kind of wet the area first, dropped some color in, and then kept dropping color as it was drying. And I really liked the way that that came out. So the next one is this. Isn't that an interesting photo? So you've got a little bit of the bag up here. Can you see a little bit of the bag? Some pink flowers, but then you've got this like area back here that's almost like lichen moss. And then you have like a coffee bag full of petals. And I really love this picture because of all the texture. Again, my words for this one was tangled texture and found. So you can see all here, there's a giant tangle here. The texture is everywhere, right? This is like a burlap bag, the lichen back here, and then the texture of the petals. I really love that. The treasure was the burlap seam tangle right here. I will bring this up closer. The mood for me was hurried and abandoned. So it looked like they were maybe gathering petals and they got called to lunch. So they just dropped what they did and they left and kind of abandoned it. So here is my tangle. See all that little burlap threads. It's kind of where they sewed the seam of the burlap where they came together. But I really love the motion and the circles in there. And I love the texture on this bag. Now, do you notice that the little texture here is violet? Where this is really quite pink. And then look at the green centers of these flowers. Here's one. Here's another green one. And then here's kind of a bright yellow one right here. So that led me to this palette. And you can see, so the burlap bag are these three the petals and this for lighter and then I love that green for the center because I would have never thought of putting this green with this purple with this pink <laughs> I just wouldn't have and then I wanted to see what the pinks would do with all of those other colors so then I proceeded to mix those and let me show you what I did with this again let me show you how the little slivers turn out look at texture 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 love that I could do a little sliver down here of just pink. Let's get that little pink and green in there. That looks nice. I liked this little crease here. So you can see the crease of the bag. So I did something like that. Let me show you my art. So again, here is my sketch of the bag. This is the vintage paper. I really wanted to capture that pink and the green and the brown all kind of together. And you can see that on the paper, it gets really quite light, much lighter than over here. And I really like that. It seems almost a little more intense on the vintage paper than it does here for the pink and the green. The green just seems brighter than over here. And I like the idea of the texture kind of showing. So when I did the brown, I just kind of took my brush. So imagine that I'm just kind of dabbing it in there like this. I'm not stroking it on like that. I'm actually just dabbing it because I wanted the it to appear to have the burlap texture. So this is that sliver with that tiny petal and the curve of the bag there. There's that tiny pink petal. And there's a little bit of that purple stitching on the burlap bag. And then you can see I took advantage of the pink and the brown. And then the pink and the green. I just picked a whole sliver of that. And then this was my tangle. Remember all that swirl and the back seam? And then I tried to, for the big, big area here, I wanted to do a, an enlarged area of the burlap. So let me see if I can show you that. So do you see how some parts see that they kind of go like this, straight lines, and then they come over like that. So I was trying to figure out what that texture would look like. And this is what I came up. So it goes across, but then it comes over. And each one goes, so this goes over, under, over. This goes under, over, under, right? So they kind of think of weaving where it goes in and out, over and under. 
So I wanted to do that really big here. It's forcing me to look at things differently, which I really, really like. And the third one I'm going to share is this one here. Is this not the most beautiful picture? <laughs> I love this picture for several reasons. It has a curved archway here. It has all this wildness in the flowers. And then it has this green door and this pale green mailbox right here. There's just so much texture. There's little tiny bricks up here. There's big stonework here. Let me see if you can see all that. So there's the small brickwork. Here's the more curved brickwork. Look at all these flowers, aren't they gorgeous? Here's the green door. Can you see the little mailbox right there? And look how the tree branch is growing over it. This goes inside. I love the handle. I love everything about this piece. So my words for this was rambling, curvature, hard stone, and soft roses. So I love the play of hard and soft and what they did for one another because the softness really softened the brick a little, but the brick hardness kind of made the roses seem almost unnatural. And I really like the juxtaposition of that. The mood for me was dreamy, romantic, and wild. The treasure, remember that little mailbox? The mailbox for hand-delivered love letters from a secret admirer is, is what I wrote. Because I just love that it's tucked away and it's almost secretive until you really look closely. Like, what is that green there? And then you discover that. So for this, let me show you little slivers of this as well. So I've got to show you the door because that's just simply charming. So look at that. <laughs> Isn't that fun? It has a really wild big leaf over here, which I like. It's more of a spiky leaf than little tendrils. I love that. I love seeing the curve up here and the white of the brick with just a little hint of color here. So let me show you what I did there. So this was the color palette that I chose for that page. And you can see I really wanted more like a orangey coral kind of roses. I went with a soft pale kind of a tealy green and then a darker green for the doorway. And then this was to represent the bricks. And because I haven't worked with this color much, I put that in the middle and saw what different areas I could mix with that, what different colors I could mix with that. And I really, really liked them. I love the, the um, more browns that mixed with that. So this plus the dark green gave me this. This plus that tealy green gave me this. I thought those were really pretty colors. So again, here's my little sketch of the doorway. And then here is me playing around with the leaves. And on the paper here, this vintage paper, I really like the wet on wet, how it works. The water stays like the droplets. If you were to put water down, it stays above the surface for a little bit before it absorbs into the paper, where this paper absorbs right away. So you have a lot more time to drop in different colors. So think of a water drop just sitting there and I'm adding a color here. And then a couple minutes later, I'm adding another color. A couple minutes later, I'm adding another color. And that's where you see all of this beautiful softness here. And the same with the flower. I kept in dripping in different colors, different values, just to see how that came about. And let me bring that closer. So can you see all the color variation here? And then this was me of the stone and the doorway here, just playing with the shadowed area, making the stone and the doorway have a lot of texture. Then this was just a branch where I added some of the flower color to the branch just to make it have a little bit of the reflective color that I was seeing. And I liked it that the brown had a little bit of the orange, it had a little bit of green in there. And again, I did that while it was wet. So while it was wet, I just kept adding different colors in there to see what would happen. I really like the idea of a cascading kind of area of flowers. So I like this. It almost looks like berries, but I, I know it's roses because that's what I was going for. And then this is the small leaves, but looking at them as 
of value instead of individual leaves. So you can see that there's light areas, there's some little hidden darks in there, but I tried to capture the values instead of individuality. Once I came back with the darker leaves, I decided that they could be smaller just to add that little delicateness that I was seeing in the art. And then again, this was the roses against the stone wall. So as I did the uh, rose, so I wet it first and then dropped some color in. And then I wet this while the rose was still wet so that I could drop some of that light color, like the Titan Buff in there. But it would also blend some of this because the white was reflecting the color of the rose on it because it's such a vibrant rose. So if this was like a pale yellow rose, you really wouldn't see it. But if this was a bright red rose, you would definitely see it reflecting in here. So I like how they kind of melded into one another and I will show you the colors there. So do you see it blending into one another? I just think that adds such a nice softness. And remember where I talked about the words were um, hard stone and soft roses. So I like the way that that looks together. So it is a different way of studying, right? But it is giving me a challenge thinking about the verticalness of things. And I'm liking that challenge. I was so intrigued by that with M Melissa Sweet's art that trying to do that myself, it was really different thinking. And this is like the perfect journal for that because I get to explore it in one area here. And yet this, it's still vertical, but it's not as vertical as this. But yet I'm also giving myself a big area to play and a little area to draw. But then I also get to play with palettes that I'm not familiar with and I'm trying new things. This book, like I said, it has so many beautiful photographs that you could do, you could fill an entire sketchbook with just picking palettes like this. So for this too, I did a little mass tone and then I added water to do a little lighter value here. So this is the same color, just with water. I did that on all of them so that I would have, so that I would be familiar with what they looked like with lighter values or more water added to them. So I hope that you were inspired by this little sketchbook practice. It's another way to step yourself out of the box and get yourself thinking differently. So maybe you're one that works a lot in a vertical format. So think about maybe working horizontally or think about working in circles, right? That would be an interesting thing to take one of these pages and do a circle you know, maybe take a circle template and then hold like, okay, I've got to do what's in here or I've got to do what's in here. You know, that's kind of a neat way to look at things too. It just challenges you to think outside the box. And I think when you challenge yourself, it develops other senses because I think it makes you more curious and you're looking at the world with almost new eyes. And I think that's a really great thing for artists who have been painting a very long time to be expecting the unexpected, but yet not limiting your choices and looking at things with endless possibilities. If you are inspired by today's video, please like, comment, or subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. Thanks so much for watching.